Into the danger zone we go with Porsche design watches, every last one. And the final say so on which watch was Mavericks. Let's check it out. Welcome back to this hobby of ours and what I hope will become the ultimate guide to the Porsche design watches, the 7176S and a couple other related models. In today's video, we're going to go over the Mario Andretti variants, we're going to go over the Top Gun variants, and we're even going to look at the Dan Henry, because the Dan Henry's in the collection as well. So let's jump into it. The Mario Andretti watch is well documented in this fabulous book. You probably have it, A Man and His Watch. And there are, this is pretty easy to pick out because if we note this picture over here, the configuration of the subdials, clearly it's the Valjoux 50, uh, the 7750. And we also want to note that the scale is in kilometers, the day is in German. And that's how we know uh, the Mario Andretti watch amongst uh, the variants that have the, 70, uh, the, the 7750 in it. So we've got a silver model here. Uh, this is obviously not in the black uh, powder coat, but it uh, appears to be, um, you know, close. Not quite there, obviously. It has a PD on, PD on the dial. doesn't have the Orfina, even though Orfina made this watch. Uh, over here is the Andretti one. We have the German day wheel, the kilometers, and back here we have one made for the American market. Uh, it's got miles on it, not kilometers. Next up, we have a pair of models having the Lemania 5100 movement, the Lemmy, and we know this is the Lemmy because of the subdial at 12 o'clock having a 24-hour scale that is, you know, tied to the main hour hand, so you can't set them independently, which is a little bit of a shame because. If that, if that Le Mania 5100 movement went back into production, I would be asking them to make that independent because then, ba-bam, GMT watch. And the in, these, in both of these, the day wheel is in English. And this one, of course, in the powder-coated black, although the silver is quite nice as well. And if I'm being honest, you can get the silver ones at a little better of a price, although the powder-coated black one, absolutely gorgeous. Now for a bit of a rogues gallery and a brief review of who's been making the Porsche design watches over the years. The 7176S in the Fiddy and in the Lemmy were made by Orfina. And while the watch was designed in 72, it didn't hit the market until 73. And Orfina was the partner from 73 to 78. And somewhere around 75, 76 is when they changed the movement from the Valjoux to the Le Mania, uh, somewhat due to the production of the Valjoux Fiddies. And then from 78 to 97, uh, we saw their partnership uh, move to IWC. And over here in titanium, we have the IWC 3704, an absolutely beautiful model from the period. A little bit dated, integrated bracelet. We'll take a closer look in a minute. And then uh, Porsche actually bought Eterna in 1995 and then ultimately produced this piece here which is also in titanium while uh, with Eterna. And this is the 6625.10 model. And then Porsche sold on Eterna in 2011 uh, to a holding company uh, based out of China. Last thing we have the Dan Henry 1972 which is a beautiful watch. And whereas most of the Dan Henry watches seek to emulate an aesthetic from a period, uh, this one is a pretty much one-to-one -one, uh, recreation of the 7176S with uh, the notable addition of a alarm function, which is pretty cool. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. And there we have a little bit of a rogues gallery. Now let's get up in your business and get hands-on with these pieces. Top Gun rules of engagement are written for your safety and for that of your team. They are not flexible, nor am I. Is that clear? Yes, sir! 
Our rules of engagement are that um, everything to the right of the F-14 is powered by the Valjoux 7750, the Fitty. Uh, these two here are the Lemania 5100 based, and this here is the Quartz Dan Henry. We're going to look at several pairings of these, do some comparisons. Uh, the first one, of course, being the comparison between the Lemania and the Valjoux models in determining which watch was Maverick's watch. And for that first one, let's hit the deck. All right, the debate about which watch Maverick wore has been probably raging in quiet circles and back alleyways since uh, the movie came out. Myself, even recently, coming into new knowledge of it, thanks to the uh, wonderful HD photos available, props to Rana. So over the years, it's been considered Porsche design, Hoyer, or Le Jour. Uh, but after what I've seen this week, it is absolutely clear which one it is. The Porsche design Orfina 7176 has always been the front runner. And uh, because there were two models, one with the Valju 77 Fuddy and the Lemania 5100, the Lemania 5100 being the one preferred by military forces, I myself thought it was the Lemmy. But others have said, oh no, it's the Hoyer Pasadena, or it's the Lejeure Pasadena. And Hoyer licensed the design and movement to Lejeure, so it's basically a Hoyer on the inside. I like the Lejeures mostly because they were affordable for some time. Time was, you get those for 400 bucks, which is a steal. Uh, the Pasadenas I really don't like, mostly because Hoyer knocked off Porsche design with the model. So, kind of don't like that one. So which one did Maverick wear? This high-res photo that I received just this past week is going to tell us all we need to know. Let's get up in your business. First off, we can clearly see the 30 and the 20 from the sub dial at 12 o'clock present in this photo. A very, very different format on that sub dial than the Lemmy. Uh, where was this photo when I needed it about a month ago? And then next, you see how the word uh, one mile is disjointed from the 60 or the 750? That tells me that this particular variant with the Rehot is this model because the other ones, even the fitties, have the word tachymeter there. But these, this print is not connected and the one mile is offset. My goodness, for me it's clear as day now seeing it. Lastly, you can't miss that PD letter logo above the day, nor the, the, the expanse of the wording Porsche design across the bottom. Of any of the proffered variants, that is the longest text expression beneath the day-day complication. So for me, and affectionately dubbed the one mile, is, is the one, you know, and the shakedown, these are all mostly nice watches, the two on the left being nicer. Uh, not a Pasadena fan, but that's just me and my personal grievance against Hoyer for knocking it off. I'm not saying it's a bad watch. It's got a fitty inside. It's got to be good. And that Lejeur, if you could still get those for under six, I'd even be rooting for the Lejeur as a possible own and operate, but... They're cruising at 1400, 1500. I don't feel they're worth it, especially since the, maybe one of, the, one of those in better condition. But if it's me, I'm saying hold out and hunt down the real one. The only Top Gun, the Fitty. Now that we've got that debate out of the way, uh, let's get hands on with the, the 271, uh, the, a pair of 7176s's. Uh, let's pop up some measurements uh, for the Lemania, for the Porsche design, and let's uh, get them held up next to one another and get a real good sense of what it might be like to own and wear these. Uh, these are both gorgeous. You can't go wrong with either. Uh, the Lemania one, as we can see, very much thicker, right? And it wears a little bit like a hockey puck on the wrist. Uh, it's the better movement, although that movement is out of production, and to get one serviced is, you're looking at 1100 bucks to service one of these, whereas the Valjoux uh, is still available, and parts readily available, and pretty much anyone can work on them uh, if you have an issue. So 
cost of ownership a little better with this and if I'm being honest if I had to only have one I'd keep the Mario and Dreddy watch one the, the fitty it just fits me better I'm gonna put these on the wrist and then you can get kind of a sense of that we're gonna pull a Castro if these will both fit on the same wrist without it looking a little bit <laughs> too goony right so if I get that held pressed down because uh, I, I like mine a little bit loose that's why it's showing up like that so from this angle it kind of doesn't look that bad but when you look at the long lead angle it just fits me better and if I'm being honest I like it a bit more a pretty excellent watch I don't know why I'm so in love with it I just I adore it absolutely adore it so while we have the Mario and Dreddy watch in hand let's call up Dan Henry for a comparison side by side and kudos to Dan uh, his company did an amazing homage here and it's not hiding what it is right it's it has the Tom Cruise looking motorcycle on the back how cool but this is a quartz movement and it's actually added an alarm function which is what that pusher handles down on the lower left beautiful I, I, I like Dan's watches the, the other watches he offers seem to hearken to an aesthetic for a time period of the general watch styles but this one an excellent effort at uh, making an affordable version of a fabulous one watch and these can be had cheaply there was only 1972 of them so that's kind of limited um, if you can pick one of these up for under 300 bucks do it especially if as these go up and up these are trending around 2500 the lemmy is 3500 four grand and above at this point uh, so they're kind of hard to get into price wise but these i have a suspicion that when top gun comes out these are going to go through the roof um, although everyone's betting he's wearing the original from the first 1986 top gun he might be wearing that new seven thousand dollar one porsche you know released in highly limited i think it was 50. crazy Taking a look at the Dan Henry on the wrist, it wears very well, very much in keeping with the original uh, 7176. They also made this in silver with some blue accents, which is very, very attractive. There was a time when I saw these, you know, going for $800 or more on the forums. Uh, I don't know where they're at right now. Uh, sometimes they're on eBay, sometimes they're not available, uh, but it's 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 absolutely worth checking out if you want to get into one of these for certainly under 400 um, if that's a better price point for you this Dan Henry is I, I could not be more appreciative of what he's done with the model all right we're next gonna take a quick look at a used and bruised uh, Porsche design so gosh the uh, Valjus were produced from 73 to about 75, 76 ish. And then there's conflicting reports either of Valjus 7750 lack of availability and or whether or not Orfina wanted to get the military contracts and the military required the Lemonia movement. I can see either being uh, possible. So the, this one is from 73 to 75 ish and it, she's had a life, right? She's got some bezel scraping and some severe wear to the powder coat. Remember, this is not PVD. This is not DLC. This is powder coat. And the interesting thing is, okay, D, why would you buy a piece in such shoddy shape? Got it at a fabulous price. And there is a company that is out of Germany that does full frame off restorations of these using the exact same process of powder coating from back in the day hopefully it's been improved a little bit and they'll do a service on the movement and it's pretty affordable I think it's around somewhere between 1500 1800 for full bore which is a lot but if you get priced in on a unit that is in super bad shape and you negotiate downwards because of the bad shape then you can have one of these in basically new old stock condition so that's why I went in on this now this is certainly wearable and uh, enjoyable in its current state and some people like a bit of it uh, but, <laughs> but 
Tina. Uh, we'll call this wear and tear. Uh, the one thing I won't do is I won't buy one of these that has a really jacked up crystal because a bad crystal, this is mineral, uh, you can't do anything for it uh, except replace it. And you can get replacement crystals out there. They're, they're pretty cheap, but you have to have a good relationship with your watchmaker because most watchmakers won't do a crystal swap without a full service of the piece. And if the piece is running fine and you just need a crystal swap, that's when your relationship with your watchmaker comes into play. You know, these links sell for 75 to 150 bucks themselves on eBay. Uh, but they're out there. That's You really got to, you can punch the one pin out. You got to really go to work on that to get that out. So here is the used and bruised special. If you can get one uh, at a lower price point that justifies the condition and the fix, do it. Next up is this rather unusual titanium piece from the IWC period. I call this watch, uh, G Money laughs that I bought this. I call this one the six line because it's got six lines of branding between the dial and the word Titan that was carved into the case. I adore this watch. It's brutalistic. It's certainly emblative of its time and futuristic but also looking retro. Uh, this bracelet is so unusual. The way you get these uh, this bracelet off is right in the middle. Uh, if you slip a safety pin in there, there's a little trigger release and it comes right out. It's, it's <laughs> I had to find that out on myself on my own. Uh, it's an unusual bracelet system, but kind of neat. Very sci-fi-ish. And one of the excellent qualities of this is the uniformity of the design with the chronograph pushers also being integrated into the case. It is so streamlined. Beautiful. Let's pop it on wrist, have a quick look. Not bad, not bad at all. This model is the 3704, and you can find these with a, a little more less branding uh, if you find it distasteful, but for some reason, getting the six line, I don't know, I just love it. I don't know why. Usually I'm not one for over branding on a dial. I mean, it's all in one sector, but having it go the extra mile and stamping it into the case. The other ones just say IWC, Porsche Design, and there's nothing here so it's actually quite quite tasteful uh, if you prefer a little less logoing let's take a look at the last titanium model today the one from the Eterna period and done in silver the the new one that they have released is in black and it's titanium and I picked this up out of a cellar in France hence the the French date wheel that is about to turn over. Let me, let me sort that out. And uh, gorgeous, lightweight, uh, not as light as I thought it was going to be relative to the other uh, 7176s, but wears very, very well on the wrist. My wrist, six and a half inch on this side. Almost, a little, almost looks a little bit fat there. Well, let's put that next to a, uh, a silver. Ooh, ooh, that was not going to fit up the wrist. I'll have to do it on the fly. Well, let's pull this one up. All right. Both of these watches having the fitty on the inside and basically same height little bit of a bezel. I believe this one is sapphire. I think this is this is definitely mineral. I think this one is sapphire. Not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, gorgeous. Uh, this is a very rare bird, this titanium. I only ever saw one of them and uh, grabbed it. Uh, I think that if you like these watches, if you want to enjoy some of the brand uh, these silver vintage pieces are more affordable than the, the powder coated black ones these ones it's rare as chicken teeth these are these are hard to come by 
and uh, this should feel much lighter and it doesn't which would be really uh, really curious so great pieces uh, and another option if you can't find or don't want to pay an extra premium for the all uh, powder coated black one and there we have it a full collection review of the Porsche design models we've uh, satisfied the burden of proof for the Top Gun Maverick watch debate hopefully once and for all got to experience some unusual pieces it's always fun to get similar models side by side so you can make some determinations for yourself ultimately I wanted to make this something of a buyer's guide for you if you have any questions about these watches uh, if you want me to look at a piece for you that you're considering uh, shoot me a comment we'll get in touch uh, happy to do that for you free of charge I after collecting collecting these for I don't know how many years now I've got this basis of knowledge about them I'm happy to share that with you and I hope you've enjoyed this trip through this little hobby of ours all right be well